This is the plaintiff, Jose Lopez. He says the defendant's his aunt and cousin stole his clothes out of spite, won't return them or pay him what they're worth, and he's at it. That's right, they had no right stealing from him, and family or no family, he's suing them for every penny of the $2,439.30 is owed. These are the defendants, Jessica and John Delgado. Jessica says they put the plaintiff up at their place when he had no place to live. And they started noticing things were missing from the house. The end grade was stealing from them. That's when the plaintiff began telling bogus lies that they were taking his things. Now, he's been evicted. They have a restraining order against him, and if anybody's owed money today, it's them. They're accused of rubbing a relative the wrong way. The defendants will file a counter suit for $3,640.11 for all they're owed. All parties, please use your right hands. You see it? Come to order, please. Let against have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You Jose Lopez, you are suing your aunt Jessica Delgado and your cousin John Lopez Delgado for $2,439.30 in stolen items that you say they stole from you. You have a counterclaim against him for $3,640 in lawyer's fees for having to evict him, plus some, a stolen bike and a damaged car. What happened? Okay, um, when I came back, I, before anything, I was staying at my mom's house. Me and my little brother got into like a little argument and I never get any restraining order from Wait, being- Wait, who got a restraining order? I had to stay away from my brother. Right, so yeah. they gave a restraining order to the other guy, yeah, which yeah. is your brother. Who yeah. is the person next to you? My mom. They what happened? The what the little skirmish that required police? You know, when my brother and I have a little argument, the police have never once shown up. Well, Tell I'm me about explain it. what happened. I guess they got into an argument about something that had, was... Physical? Oh, my gosh. Oh, no, wait. It was not physically because he didn't touch the 15-year-old, but the 15-year-old attacked him. Uh, who issued the restraining order and why? Somebody had to the say, court. yes, I want a restraining order. No, the court did because of the fact that, I guess, he Were had there already criminal a charges case. pending against you? For, yeah, for something else. No, but for this? No. Oh, uh, no. Not for this one. No. I was right. I was on probation. So you have nowhere to go, so you call your aunt. I called my cousin. I texted him. Your told cousin? Him, I told him he had a few dollars for I could stay at a hotel for the night. He ended up telling me I could go there, stay over there. And the next morning, I woke up. Um, I, um, so I told, her, I told her what was going on at my house about the restraining order, because she asked me, are you going to tell me what's going on? Why are you staying here? So I spoke to her after her son had sent me, I have messages that he sent me that I could stay there at the How house. old is he? 19, 20. Okay, so he, he does not decide if you stay there, she does. It's her house, right? Yeah. Okay, so you know that at some point, you gotta like pony up to the adults in the room. Yeah, so yeah. I ended up talking to her the, the next real. morning. She told, me, she told me I could stay there, because I told her my situation. She told me I could stay there as long as I get a job, and I start making money to save up to get a place. A few days, a few weeks passed, and then I came home one day from the lake with my ex-girlfriend and the baby. I got home knocking on the door for a what while. What baby? My ex-girlfriend's baby. Is that your baby? No. Okay. So I got home and she didn't want to open the door. We were there for like half an hour. It was like 90 degrees outside. We we're sweating there. The baby's sweating. We ended up turning on the water outside to wet the baby's face a little bit. She turns off the water from well, inside. But clearly something had happened before that because this is the same person who when you should be in a shelter, opened her home to you. Yeah. So you're skipping a little bit. What happened before that that animosity? I don't, I don't even know. I got okay, home Okay, then I'll day. ask you, what happened? You bring him into your home and what? Um, he started taking stuff from my son in my daughter's room. How do you know? Um, uh, we, we, my son kind of noticed, but he kept it quiet. He Which son, this one? John. What happened? Um, so pretty much what happened, uh, I start coming home from school, things are, in the area of where I put them. I notice they're missing. They're nowhere to be found like in the house. Uh, pretty much a Stanley toolbox. It's like a small toolbox of a 100-piece set. Um, I noticed that was missing. I noticed that my piggy bank, where I just throw my spare change, it was tipped over. Like, all the copper pennies to the side, there was no you know, quarters, any silver pieces. So I ask him, pretty much I ask him about all that stuff. Uh, oh, also, a. Uh, Honda t-shirt that I wore the previous day was nowhere to be found uh, and I asked him about that I spoke to him he said he had nothing to do with it he had no idea what happened was there anybody else in your home no 
So at some point, pretty quickly, you no longer want him there because stuff is missing. Exactly. And he's the new feature in the house. Everybody, nobody else and, was and we, stealing from each other we, before that. We didn't lock like our bedroom doors or anything. You know, we trusted people. They took advantage. Who's they? Um, Jose and the girlfriend. Um, she was staying the, there too. She, you know, um, suddenly the the girlfriend would come one day. The other day she wouldn't come. One day she'll come with the baby. He was coming early. Coming and staying over. Yeah. The just, girlfriend and the baby. Yeah. How old there. was the baby? About two years old. And um, I had to lose my sleep to it, but I was not going to give him a key after I figure out he was stealing from our home. I was not going to give him a wait, key. Wait, wait, give him a key? When you figured out or you had an inkling he was stealing from your home, why didn't you tell him you got to go? He called the cops on us because supposedly his stuff was missing from the bedroom. What the cops do? Um, they, I can't kick him out because the law says that if you give him a roof over your head, he has to get evicted. That's absolutely false. If someone's and an invitee in your home, the police and department, they should stick to policing yeah. and mm -hmm. not lawyering. Well, the police was um, giving him all the, all the different feedbacks. You know, you're entitled to this, you're entitled to that. And basically, it was my daughter's bedroom. Was he paying rent? No, right. I, no, I didn't ask no. him for rent. I didn't ask him. For, okay, so when you said, I don't know why she locked us out and made the baby sweat. Do you now know why she locked you out and made the baby sweat? Oh. She and he feel that you were stealing stuff from them. Technically, he didn't tell me nothing. He, he ended up telling me after they took my clothes that his stuff was missing. What about, I, there's something about a fishing pole here. What's that about? The fishing pole, I had texted him if I could borrow it, and he told me I can borrow it. According to you, you told him don't take that fishing I, pole. I did not give him my permission to use that fishing pole. And then you come home, you see the fishing pole missing, and then do you take his clothes? No. I, he came to me, all right, and he was just like, why do you think that I'm taking, you know, the stuff that's missing around the house? And I just, you know, at the time I explained why, and then I told him, I asked him to leave. Um, and he, he didn't seem too happy about it, but he definitely grabbed his stuff and he left. Hours later, he comes <laughs> back and he's like accusing me of taking his things and miscellaneous. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm just something? not understanding. You're, you're, you're trying to interrupt and you're all over because this. I was but there wait, I'm day. sorry. Hold on, I'm in the middle of a sentence. I'm sorry. You can't control the situation in your house. Your 15 year old gets a restraining order against a 21 year old. Your 21 year old should go to a homeless shelter, but they take him in and you're mad at them. I'm not mad at her. I'm mad at her for the fact that I, this is not the first time she's done this. Then why would you let okay? your son go I there? I didn't let my she son did. go yeah. there. I told her many times, stop letting my kids go to her house. Why don't you tell okay? your they kids? Were old enough. Why is everyone else to blame? She had like 10 kids sit staying in her house. Down. Sit well, down. Like sit down. Sit house. down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Mr. Lopez, you're suing for two thousand, almost $2,500 <laughs> in stuff that you say they took. And what you're saying they took is 10 pairs of Hollister jeans. It's about, it's about more than that. You know, I did How an How many estimate. pairs of Hollister jeans does a guy need who's homeless? <laughs> 10 uh, pairs? About, you have 10 pairs? Do you have the receipts for them? Not on me. Nobody well, saves all the receipts. Not on you. Like, well, uh, I don't save yeah, them. I, let me I just tell you something because you're 20. Like, no, stop. Lots of people save receipts. And then they come to court and they have what's called evidence. I know because I've been doing what you're watching me doing here for 24 years. That's longer than you, so put your hand down. That is longer than you've been on the earth. So yes, people save receipts. All right, but you know what's really weird? People buying 10 pairs of Hollister jeans, exactly 10, no more, no less. And that should <coughs> yield you, according to you, $599.50. And then four pairs of Eblen jeans. Okay, and then seven pairs of Air Jordan sneakers. Seven, seven pairs of Air Jordan sneakers at $190 per pair. But you can't find money for a hotel when you're kicked out of your house. Welcome back to the People's Court, Harvey Levin here. So he says he had 10 pairs of Hollister jeans, seven pairs of Air Jordans. Do you believe he really had that stuff? No, um, no. You don't seem convinced though. What do you say? No, I don't think so. You don't think so? The guy is broke. How much are Air Jordans? I'm not sure. I think he had the stuff, but I think he stole it in the first place. Oh, well that is, <laughs> that's an alternate theory. I got it, going inside the courtroom. Do you understand how this list might seem a little bit suspicious to someone when you have zero evidence of it, like you might be just making stuff up to get to a big number. I had two jobs before that that I could show that. Do you have any evidence of what you're claiming? I wasn't, I wasn't. Yes I'm or no, here. do you have evidence for what, for your claim? Any evidence? 
not on me. I got pictures. Well, no, this is on I me. have pictures this is of today. my stuff This being is the, in the trial. Room. You filed the case. So when you file the case as the plaintiff, the plaintiff decides when to go to court. So, all I right. I have pictures of my now stuff Now, you being in the room. end up evicting him legally. Like, I you actually to. go to court to evict him? Because did you pay a lawyer? Yeah, I had to because I didn't, I didn't know Why what... Why did you just leave? I told her if she gives me my stuff, I can leave. So how long did it take you to evict him? It took up a couple of weeks. So for those couple of weeks, what was it like? It was a hassle because every time he'd come across me, he would harass me or How? ask me questions. Um, you know, wh where's my stuff? Where's my stuff? It's you know, um, John has to come up That's with this right. money. I'm going to bring him to court. You know, um, just just being hazardous. And, and personally, I'm an emotional person that I suffer from um, depression and anxiety. I could not tolerate him. Or one of the officers that was nice enough said, just go and get a restraint order against him. And I, I did. You know, he the, never showed up to court for the restraint order and they granted it. But according to you, you were the eviction case was set the same day as the it's restraining the same order. Day. It's the same day. In the so same you're in eviction court and who's in eviction court? Is she in eviction She's court? She's not there. But there's a lawyer for you? He, I, I, I hired an attorney because the police officer officer was saying that I could not um, do it unless I evict him illegally to get him out of my house. I could not kick him out. Um, so meantime, while he's stealing my house, I had to open the door so he could stay and still take more stuff out of my apartment. Um, what more stuff went police, missing during those the weeks? Bike, the bike went missing. What after. bike? Tell me about the bike. The BMX bike was in the living room behind the, um, the sofa. All right. Um, did you take the bike? No, and they had cameras. Did you key your aunt's car? Because somebody keyed her car. I have And a you're key. the only one she was having a problem with. This, this keying problem, they started way before that. He told me that people used to pop his tires at school. He had problems with people at school that he was going to. And they also had cameras at the house. They had cameras since I was living there at the house. So why doesn't this show any proof I got the cameras after anything? everything started. Are you, You're you gone now, right? Yeah. Where I'm, are you now? I, I have a restraint. I'm living back with my mom. They. So can't. what happened with your little brother? They modified the restraining order. Mr. Lopez, I want you to listen to me. If you want to play house and have a girlfriend with a two-year-old, and you need to man up and get your own place. If you're going to be a grown-up, be a grown-up. Put your big boy pants on and be a grown-up. They don't have to find housing for you. They don't have to find housing for you. You need to get a job then you won't have all these problems. People won't take from you. People won't accuse you of taking from them. You've got a case where you've come in here, and it's not that I don't believe you. I kind of have a sense that maybe you took stuff from them, that maybe he took stuff from you in retaliation, and now we have this standoff where you want to prove to me $2,500, dollars worth of damage without a stitch of proof. And then you want to prove to me that he should pay for a bike that you don't have a stitch of proof. You both suspect each other, I and I suspect both of you. But I deal in court with proof. Where, how are you proving up your 2500 again? With nothing, your hands in your pocket. That's how you've come to court. Now, the uh, legal fees that you had to pay to get reduced. him out, those legal fees, why did you not get them in the eviction case? Um, I... I was not um, too familiarized. Um, That's where you have to go get him. So that part I'm dismissing without prejudice to you to go back to eviction court and get that. Mm -hmm. As for the other stuff, on your case, I rule in their favor, and on your case, I rule in his favor. Okay? You can't possibly expect any judge to be able to figure out who took what that was worth what at what time. When you guys descend to the depths that have been reached in this case, you can't possibly expect that somebody's gonna be able to clean it all up in a nice little package like you're asking. Well, in this unbelievable family dispute, nobody prevails for anything. Do you understand a little bit of what the judge was trying to tell you? Yeah, I understand a little bit, it's just that I just don't know. She didn't. She doesn't understand my point, Dad. And she listen. She listened to everything. You came to court seeking twenty five hundred, almost twenty five hundred dollars. No, you had no proof of anything. He, he only wanted. He only wanted fifteen hundred because the clothes were worth no twenty five. You have no. Anyways, regardless of anything, Jessica knew not to have my son at her house, and she wanted to keep going. You know, this is ridiculous. This is it, ridiculous. It, it, it is family. ridiculous. It's but not, you didn't have a place you know, for him to go either. Oh, I didn't have a place for him to go. I had a place for him to go. He didn't have to go to her house. He didn't have to go to her house. Well, the bottom line is you just can't 
you can't win in court without proof, okay? Yeah. I'm sorry about this family situation. It's a mess. It's okay? over. Well, I wonder if it's over. More money, you know, I don't know if it's or over or not. We'll find it. out. Ms. Delgado is on her way out of the courtroom. You don't collect anything. It's amazing. You got a guy living in your room. You're trying to get him evicted. It cost you how much? Over $1,000? Yes. Um, and he knew it? And well, he still stayed. You know, this is when you become a good Samaritan and try to help your family. Well, it sounds like you two are totally not on speaking terms. Well, is that right? Well, it's not, not speaking terms. It's just, you know, she's irate with this whole situation. And I'm just trying to keep calm because um, the fact is life goes on. Okay, well, good luck to you. Thank you. All righty. Good luck to you, too. Harvey, an amazing family dispute here. What do you think? Okay, this is really simple. Um, 101 law. If you start lying about stuff in court, your credibility is shot, period. 